Okay, today I want to do a quick video on, uh, of all things, chucks. Um, the reason I want to do this is because uh, I ran into a few issues trying to uh, make a hole. And so let me get started with uh, what I have here. This, as you can see, is my uh, mini lathe chuck or what came with it. Uh, it's pretty chunky. It's pretty big. And uh, it works fine. But obviously I can only use it on there unless I take these off and change it. But I'm not going to do that because you always need a chuck uh, on there if you want to do something drilling, small drilling or whatever with that. Obviously I can do it with a um, call it too but uh, <clears throat> anyways moving on this is the chuck I bought for the mini lathe. Obviously um, the reason I bought this is because I wanted to use it on the tail, tail stock and Um, it turned out okay. I mean, I like the chuck. That's why I wanted to get it because it's a keyless chuck. But um, just the other, what was it? Yesterday, I tried drilling another hole again to try and just make a nice hole on this part. This is a stainless steel that I'm making, and when when I drill this, I noticed that the chuck kept doing this. Now, or the, the the end mill. Now the chuck is fine, but what happens is you see this tang here. Um, this tends to make it do this. I mean, this is exaggerating it, but you know, even the slightest movement when you uh, move the tailstock, because this is in flat. Um, the tailstock is actually a nice round flat uh, screw of, uh, that you basically move in and out. Um, some people suggested to just cut this off, shave it and you know use it that way. Now this was pretty expensive and I didn't want to do that. You know the next thought was um, okay you can remove this uh, arbor. Uh, it's an MT2 I believe if I remember right. Um, but most of the videos you see they have this um, uh, what do you call it, uh, area here that you can just put two wedges on and pop it out. This one I can barely see it. Um, anyways, if I can barely touch something there, so that's uh, sorry about that. Um, yeah. And um, what do you call it? So I didn't want to do that and I can't change it and I didn't want to screw around with that. The reason I wanted to leave it is because my dad's, um, what do you call it, uh, drill press uses a similar uh, chuck setup or uh, yeah, chuck, drill chuck. And he told me it's kind of wobbly so that's what, the other reason I didn't want to take that off because I want to try this uh, chuck on the drill press. As you can see, these things are pretty big. So, um, since that's all I had when I got my mini mill, you know, I just tried using it, and it, that always gave me a problem. And just yesterday, I tried doing that number, and this is what I ended up with. So I did the hole, and then um, that hole is supposed to be just a straight hole. It's supposed to be a six millimeter thread in there that I was gonna make afterwards, and this is a six millimeter tube. And look at that, completely goes in there, which is obviously not supposed to do that. It's supposed to screw in there. So that part got ruined because of this tang. And, you know, it it is what it is. But um, now going back to this, uh, I almost forgot. Um, I haven't seen this particular model in, on any YouTube videos. The other thing uh, that I had a problem with sometimes was getting the part tightened here, you know. Because I'm not that strong, but uh, if you look at the holes here, this has two holes, and you're supposed to be able to put a spanner on there in order to uh, give you a little more grip on there. I mean, you know, you're not gonna go caveman on this, but uh, it helps. Um, I looked on eBay and I saw one for about I don't know three, four, three bucks or whatever it was. Um, so. I was thinking about getting it, but I forgot about it, and 
I went through my toolbox looking at what came with the mill and what do you know this 45 to 52 millimeter spanner came with it for the uh, to take out the the, the, the trying to think of a color on top of the uh, mill anyway so this is the perfect size and what happened was it barely would go in there over here but this is how it's supposed to work you're supposed to you know use that so what I did with it if you look at it here, let me see if I can get a close up um, I shaved the corners uh, if you see that um, the reason I did that is because I wanted to make it fit into that hole on the uh, chuck but on the mini mill, the only thing that touches is the inside and all that is fine so uh, shaving the corners outside wouldn't hurt anything and that would allow me to use it in the mini mill and the uh, the chuck as well so now I have a spanner for it which is nice so I can use that uh, I wanted to bring it up because everywhere you look you don't see anything mentioned about the spanners or the holes over here but Ah, uh, there you go. It looks pretty nice now. I mean, it doesn't go the way in. There's a stop, but if you look at it, there's hardly any space. So it's plenty to just give you a little extra so that your um, what do you call it? Drill bits don't fall or whatever. Um, so that's that chuck. I have this chuck from Makita. Uh, says right on here. Makita, I don't know if you can catch that on the video, but uh, there you go. Very nice uh, chuck, and it looks like you can unscrew this, but uh, I don't know what size thread that is, and I didn't want to bother with that because um, the other thing is I don't want to be taking this off and putting it back every time I want to use it on my drill, hand drill. So that's uh, another one that's for the hand drill. And today I decided to go to a Harbor Freight. And get yet another chuck, which is this one. Um, I was trying to see, uh, look for some videos online, but I couldn't find anything. So this is basically what you see, or the picture you see online um, everywhere. But the actual chuck looks like this. And if you look, it's actually about the same size here. And just for comparison, I want to show you this. So very, very big difference. However they're both half uh, an inch maximum uh, what do you call it a uh, bit holder there like you can barely see it here so 130 second to a half an inch two MT so that's what that is and this one is a half MT too uh, here it says 1.5 to 13 millimeters JT Jacobs taper 33 and this is a uh, MT2 as well, obviously, just like this one. Um, so that was the other thing. You either buy this and try to fit that, and or try to get this out by drilling it and doing all this mumbo jumbo. And instead, I went with this because it said it was a little smaller, which definitely makes a big difference. Um, so that's nice. And I want to use this on my tail stock for the mini Um The other thing is, it does come with the key nice key um, I f when I went to the store there was another one another one with the well it was this one but it was a different key they had a weird thing popping out it's like one of those keys that somebody didn't do right so that key was not good so I swapped it for this one the other one was like it had this thin bar all the way up to here and you could move it so check that before you buy it but it does come with a key which is something that's not mentioned on the uh, site now, um, as you can see the back, it's nice and flat like uh, what I need and not this. Um, and the weird thing is you don't see a lot of them without the tang which is pretty annoying uh, because they do make them as you can see. But it's like everywhere you see them is there for the bigger chugs here. Um, so one thing is, you know, the pictures, one color and then what you get is a different one which is nice uh, I like it looks kind of nicer than the picture but it doesn't matter I mean, it is what it is 
Um, so that's what those look like. Trying to get a good view here. And one thing I noticed a little bit is that there's a tiny, tiny bit of play all around. So, but when I push it, which is what you'll be doing, or this way, um, it goes away uh, almost. So, I'm hoping that won't be too much of a problem. I know it shouldn't be as bad as this, if, if even if it does have a little bit. However, with that said, on the Makita, there's also a tiny, tiny bit of play, but it's much less than that, obviously. Um, so, that's what I'm not too worried about it, but uh, if you look here, I don't know if you can tell. If you look at the edge here, it, it's like all over the place. And you can see it still has the grease because I, I haven't cleaned it. I wanted to uh, do this before I did anything or even use it. I just got home and um, took everything out. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you though. This is my life center. And this is the uh, bull nose uh, the adapter that I have on it. I love this thing. It works great, but the material you can see it's not the best because when I left it outside, it pit it. But the reason I want to show you this is because if I look at the back, it's a little different. It's like a little hollow there. And I really love that because the screw on the telestock actually goes in there and that keeps this thing so straight it's awesome um, I've never seen that until I started looking at this stuff and I'm like whoa I didn't notice that before but uh, although that looks a little weird and kind of is but uh, because everything else is basically like this I actually like that because it really really helps keep this uh, aligned um, doesn't seem like it but it, it does now online you'll see the other question is well how do you take it out that's the other question that I also have because to take this apart I couldn't tell you um, some have a screw here they can take a uh, take out and this pops out or comes off and um, I'm assume well I'm not assuming anything but this one comes out but there's nothing here to take apart either so go figure um, but that's something I wanted to bring up because I haven't seen it on anywhere. Um, I don't know. If this is the only place I've seen it on, uh, Life Center. But that's it, pretty much.